recording. Okay, this is called a rescuer based uh, unsupported solo lower. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna descend uh, on static lines. I'm gonna rappel down to my subject, which is the camera. Um, Steve's operating the camera. Put him in a harness. Um, and I'm gonna assume that Steve has a buddy with him and they both need to be taken down. And I can't, I'm not gonna like pick somebody off, take them down and send them back up just to pick another person off to bring them back down. I'm gonna operate a lowering system from being suspended where I am right here for multiple people. It's hence the solo lower technique. Okay, so uh, standard rappel with my uh, backup is my mobile fall rest on the ASAP. I'm gonna come down. Come down to Steve. And where I stop depends on um, Steve's ability to put his own harness on, or if I have to help, I may have to help him put a harness on for him. So right now I'm at the level of Steve. And just for uh, speed, what I've done is I've already rigged Steve up. Let's just say that I got here, we had a discussion, uh, we put the harness on, it fits right, because that takes time. And uh, rather than have you watch that process through the video, we just say that we did it. Um, so Steve's in a seat, seat harness, that's good enough for a victim. Um, so he's good. I, I put a harness on him and we're good to go. Um, now I need to kind of rig him into a system somehow. And let's figure out how we're going to do that. So Steve, go ahead and take the camera. Okay. Um, uh, I remembered to bring down some gear with me from the top. So I, hap I just so happened to bring an extra uh, descender, an ID. Um, and another ASAP. If I didn't have those things, I'd, I'd probably have to improvise. Maybe do a munter, maybe do a super munter, uh, or whatever it takes. Um, but I had the forethought, and I have that. The line that I'm on, the brake strand of my uh, descending line, or rappel line, I'm gonna bring it all the way up. And I'm gonna tie my barrel noose. So, let's see, how do we tie this thing? Give yourself enough tail to actually tie it. I go once around the thumb, back towards my wrist, twice around the thumb. That's a two wrap uh, barrel noose, also known as a poacher's knot. And I have enough tail, at least the palm's width. And the carabiner's gonna go in here into the harness. So let's see, I need a spare carabiner. And I choke up on my gain, voila. So, He's in, but he's not in. <laughs> I need to put this through an ID, and then I'm gonna set a high anchor above on my static line to actually perform the lower. Um, so what this is gonna look like is I have to go high enough in order to swing him out without creating like a shock force. Um, since I got low, I'm gonna reascend just a little bit. So I'll put this back. And get above them and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna dual purpose my ascending kit as my anchor so the ascender itself is gonna become the high point of this and I want to go to the point where um, I can maybe just reach in case I need to make some minor adjustments so that's probably okay maybe a little bit more all right I can still go pretty high on my ascenders. I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna keep this handle the center there. This is gonna be my anchor. Um, and on mine, I just rigged it up on the ring so I have all these connection points at my disposal. Uh, makes rigging uh, super easy. So I'll get rid of the pulley because um, I don't really need it with me here. I'll just put that right there for now. This is what I'm gonna use to hook in. So we have the line that I tied. This is the end of my line. This only works if these ropes can make it all the way to the ground. Otherwise, I need, to, I need to come up with another plan. And let's find the... I brought my second descender right here. And so I hook in. Like that, and now I rig the line. There we go. So Steve is the anchor, really. And the brake strand um, is gonna be me. So let's do that. It's kind of tough to do this while your, your frame of reference is a little bit off. And we hook in and we check. 
possibly pull. I rigged it correctly. Um, I'm gonna take as much as I can out of this and get it super taut. I can't, I'm not hauling, so there's no need for me to do that. Um, so I don't need to really like exert myself, but I always wanna start in high friction mode um, as a best practice. So he's, Steve's ready to be lowered. Um, now we can talk about the backups and the belays and, and all practicality. Since this is a training environment, I'm gonna put a backup on Steve. Um, but in real life, I'm probably, really, I'm just gonna forgo a belay altogether. Um, and it's all conditional based. Like my judgment call, do I need a belay or not? Yes or no. If I forgot to bring in another ASAP, uh, like a mobile fault arrest, I'd have to get like another belay line and have it operate from up top. So it would be like a independent team belay um, because the alternative is ASAP or, or Prusik. But if it's a Prusik, that has to be tended on the way down and I'm not gonna entrust my subject and give them instructions to tend themselves on their backup. They're just gonna get hung up. So I don't trust them to do that. However, I do trust that I can put an ASAP on and they'll be fine. So let's do that. I remembered my ASAP. And since Steve doesn't have a full body harness, that's fine. I'm just, just like climbers. I'm just gonna go into the same point where I tied in his main working line. This is why I don't want to send too far above because I want to be able to still make connections as needed. Um, and here, so I'm not going to put this backup on the same line. What I'm going to do is piggyback off of my backup. So it's just going to look just like this. Put that in there. Up is actually up this time for once. I've encapsulated it. ASAP lock, ASAP regular, they're both perfectly fine. Okay. Make sure that's hot, get mine up. So now Steve is connected in two places, uh, a main and a belay, or a backup, mobile fall arrest. And I can operate my uh, equipment. So I'm gonna take the GoPro. Steve, get yourself in position so that you can swing out and weight the system. Ready for weight? Ready for weight. Okay, and before we do that, I think I'm at seven minutes, so I'm gonna add in um, just a little more like uh, stuff to this equation. So what I'm gonna do is give this back to Steve, and I'm gonna assume that Steve has a hard time uh, staying upright. And maybe I, I brought a manufactured seat harness, but I didn't bring anything like to integrate into a chest harness, but I can make like a sling and keep his torso up into the system in addition to that. Um, you can try to make this and tie it on the spot with uh, one inch webbing. Um, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and try this. I don't know if it's gonna work, uh, but this is Dyneema. Um, it's just a sewn sling. And I'm gonna give it my best shot. Um, being suspended, it's kind of tough. This is called a Paris Parisian Baudrillard chest harness and all I do is I'm gonna go uh, since Steve has the camera I'm gonna actually sling this around his opposite side so hand through there we go so this is back on his shoulder and I'm gonna try and reach around the back side and grab that sling there we go and bring it up okay so this is kind of short um, but what I would have wanted to do is make a bite with this um, so let's tilt it this way. Um, I, I probably can't do this right here, but I wanted to make a bite here. Um, and let me get the sewn part out of the way. And treat this as a Beckett bend. So that's like the bite. And I'm going to treat this bite as if it were just the tail. And I would tie my Beckett through this bite. But it's really tough, like right here. Um, the reason why I wanted to just tie this in a Beckett is because if I don't and I just choke them up, here, like this is, becomes a choker. Um, and this might be uncomfortable because um, it's going to cinch down on them um, in order to raise them up. But what's the alternative? I don't know. Let's just say, for all practical purposes, I was able to size a correct sling and tie a becket right here. And once I've done that, um, since this is uh, actually a loop and not a terminal tail, I can use this becket knot. You have to use your imagination that it's a becket knot. And I can use that to attach Steve to the main line. With whatever i want so a carabiner maybe right here i could use like a prusik or something so hold that carabiner steve i'm gonna 
open up my bag of goodies and see if I, oh, yep, I have a Prusik. All right. Let's see if this works. Again, everything I'm doing at this point is just optional. Um, really, I want to get, I want to get these people down as fast as possible. But if they have a long way to go, maybe I should take a couple seconds and they can travel in somewhat of comfort. And again, if they're unconscious or semi-conscious, I absolutely want to do this. I don't want them to uh, scorpion over. So, okay. And I'm gonna cinch this up high, dress it up, cinch it up high, and I'm lowering Steve.